hello friends whatsapp today in this video i will be uh, teaching you two very small but very important topics regarding the neat pg examination from ent the first one is cochlear implant so few important question asked from this uh, topic cochlear implant is that here few things which you need to know about this topic is that the external device for the cochlear implant consists of pmt like you gave PMT exam for medical entrance so P for processor M for microphone T for transmitter and the internal device consists of receiver stimulator which is placed in the scalar tympani via the round window if you see this diagram this is the mastoid cavity this is the external ear means external auditory canal this is the middle ear and after the middle ear comes the internal ear internal ear there is round window and there is round window so the electrode is placed via the round window into the scalar tympani of the vestibule and it connects to the 8th nerve and goes to the brain stem the question is asked where the internal device is placed in the internal ear so it is it will be in the scalar tympani part of the internal ear and the external device consists of PMT. The lowest age of uses of this cochlear implant is one year. And the best candidate for using cochlear implant are the postlingual candidates. Now, two uh, uh, means if we see the most common indication, it will be Mondanese dysplasia of cochlea, in which there is only 1.5 turns are present. And the contraindication is Michael aplasia, where there is total absence of cochlea. So we cannot do this cochlear implant. So what can we do in Michael aplasia, where the cochlea is absent, is that we can do brain stem implantation. Another question which is asked, uh, uh, all India repeat question, that in brain stem implantation, where we do this, where in the brain stem. So we do the implantation of the electrode in the lateral recess of fourth ventricle. It's very important that we do the implantation of electrode in lateral recess of fourth ventricle. Quite complicated surgery, but is being dead, is being done. So uh, other, the, other, other indication for brainstem implantation is that the 8th nerve is absent, there is congenital absence of 8th nerve or there is neurofibroma type 2 like acoustic neuroma and the, the third one is cochlear aplasia. So before giving a cochlear implant one should always do, uh, means, uh, no not before, means the cochlear implant uh, therapy is followed by a speech therapy. Now, uh, in any case, the trial of uh, hearing aid is important before doing any such procedure. Now, the second topic from which uh, uh, I am going to teach here is otitis externa, the malignant otitis externa. So, if you see any question related to ENT and the patient is having diabetes, what you can see is that in ENT, the, if the, the patient is diabetic and the question is related to ear, it may be malignant otitis externa. If it is uh, patient is diabetic and related to nose, it may be mucormycosis. And if the patient is diabetic related to oral cavity, it can be Ludwig's abscess. So these three conditions are associated with diabetes and ENT, malignant otitis, otitis externa, mucormycosis and Ludwig's abscess. So treatment of choice for otitis externa is first we will try third generation cephalosporin if it doesn't respond or not available or resistant, we can try ciprofloxacin and then the paper, penicillin groups of drugs. But the surgery of choice is debridement. And these two questions are frequently asked that what we do for the prognosis and what to do for the diagnosis. So for the diagnosis, we do technetium 99 scan. For the diagnosis of otitis externa, we can do the technetium 99 scan and for the prognosis, we do the gallium scan. So how can you remember this is that PG, you all are giving PG examination for qualifying the PG examination. So P for prognosis and G for gallium scan. So you can relate this and remember because while during given exam, this type of mnemonics, mnemonics or the relations uh, are means uh, do help us because there's lot to think and 300 questions in two less 
time so to how you will manage monitor this patient you can do regular e esr monitoring the decrease or increase of esr level so the this otitis externa is also known as osteomyelitis of skull base if some patient some in some question asked ki what the organism responsible for osteomyelitis of skull base or the organism responsible for malignant otitis externa it will be pseudomonas the other names the examiner can confuse you uh, is by the generalized otitis externa or the perichondritis or the osteomyelitis of skull base or the malignant otitis externa all are the same things with the pseudomonas so i will be updating you with other important topics of neat pg examination so revise uh, these two topics It's, these are very important i have covered the most important question asked from these topics thank you